and Toronto stay bottom on the Richard Osman pointless. <laughs> um, stat line of the week. I'm going to give a special nod to John Wilkins, but he needed one more marker tackle to win stat line of the week because I'm going to give it to a player from my point of view that was involved in the winning side, and that's James Clare. Going over 200 metres is always impressive. So one try, 216 metres, three clean breaks. What was your... Did you have anything different for that? Um, no, probably not. That's probably pretty good. What about player of the week? Who did you pick out as your player of the week from this the, from this round of fixtures? I think it's got to be Richie Myler. Yeah, I, I think that's a you know it's a fair shout. Um, it's sort of yeah puzzles 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 me to say it, but I think he has. <laughs> I think you know he, he did he did his job very well and very ably and filling in at, at fullback. You know he did. I think he did what he's picked to do. Yeah, I think there's there's, there's fairness to that. Although my player of the week is Liam Marshall for his hat trick and all right. Really. Strong play. Plus the wonder try, which is, of course, my highlight of the week. I don't know if you want to pick out a different highlight of the week, but it was definitely the best try this weekend in Super League. It's it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? Uh, in terms of the predictions, me and David both went four out of six. It was those two um, two games that we talked about uh, last there, Hull FC's loss and Salford's loss that, that cost us. In terms of the Super Brew on the host's side of things, Tim... Bad news for you. You still, you're still in last. Sarah wore the yellow cap. But... I peaked at week one, and we always knew that, that that would have happened, and it's not a surprise. So Scoots wears the yellow cap, but she's in third still. I'm in second still because Alan, despite having the wooden spoon this week in our little mini group there, stays top. In the main Super Brew, Steve Pye stays top. Simon Lees, though, is sporting the yellow cap this week, so well done to Simon. In the fantasy competition... Alan Bagley stays top. Yawn, yawn. Well done, Alan. <laughs> but Elliot Holsworth had the best weekly score with 667. Some consolation for that Giants fan there on that one. Uh, thank you to everyone who got in their fan views. Make sure you look out for the Google Form links next week to get your fan views in all over again as we do it again next week. But uh, we still have some other things to talk about, Tim. First up, that is... I, yeah, I have a Maltese truffle to unwrap as well. Well, we'll have a little breather before we talk about the other results from around the world of Rugby League. Other results time. It was round four in the championship. Um, First game to talk about Batley, 18, Sheffield, 19. Uh, Isaac Farrell get one over one of his former teams I think there Halifax 28 York 4 York is that sorry just to stop on that is that the first use of the new golden point rules I've no idea I didn't even know it was a golden point game uh, um, I, I like, like, like I sort of said to you whilst we were uh, briefing what we were going to do for this section I don't I don't really know much about the championship games this weekend it was in the 88th minute the, the, the drop goal so there was no golden point situation there uh, oh, it was Golden Point course, yeah. Yeah, it would have been. Out of, yeah. Yeah. There we oh, go. so Batley, that's why Batley are on three points. Makes sense now. Yeah, there you go. Halifax 28, York 4. York's disappointing start continues. London's slump um, over, the, over the last couple of weeks hit, hits hard. Uh, London 10, Featherston 34. And Paul Chamberlain got in touch to tell us exactly what happened in this one. Yeah, piss poor from London. Ward went of a young side, including three halves, Three wingers and two hookers, and they never looked like knowing what they were doing or what they were playing or why they were playing in their positions. Conversely, Feb were much bigger, experienced and organised. McClellan was excellent, whilst Ferris still looked a fat wanker. Was he playing at, was he playing at hooker? Um, attendance was pathetic. Um, Oldham 12, Bradford 26. I think this ended up on our league, so um, Carsten got in touch. Strong hook first half of on the balls and if they would have listened to coach they would have had that game done very early late Simbins showed the frustration for both sides uh, Whitehaven 4 to lose 40 Dewsbury 20 witness 8 a little bit of a surprise there and Swinton versus Lee was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch um, in terms of the standings there do you want to run us through those quickly for the championship 
Yeah, Toulouse are unbeaten with four from four, so they are on top. Lee and Featherston come next with three out of three that they've managed, joined on six points by London, who are three out of four. Halifax, Witness and Dewsbury have four points. Batley have three points in eighth. Swinton, Bradfield, Sheffield, Oldham, all on a win each. And Whitehaven and York are in the bottom two, both yet to win the campaign. Uh, in League One, it was round two, but it was actually the first round of games played. <laughs> uh, and we kick off League One chat with Coventry 8, Newcastle 28. Of course, it was a game that you were at. You were announcing what was going on at the Big Butt. It was a, it's a decent game, actually. Um, refereeing decisions were, at some points, um, inconsistent, but then they sort of even them out in their own inconsistencies. It probably actually became about even by the end, but there were some, there were some more interesting ones. Coventry were in this up until just after half time. And then Newcastle did pull away. Some of their more experienced players did well. And Kov had probably six or seven players playing their first game for the side. So it's not hugely yeah. surprised. A few on, couple on Jewel Reg did quite well um, I thought Kadeem Williams had an excellent game played really well at centre he's turned into a real leader this season from the couple of games I've seen already and he's doing very well and um, oh, there was another player who, who was in my head and has, has leapt straight out let me look at the team sheet and see if I can remember um, this is what happens when I do these things um, Brad Brad Clavering um, played very well. He's been signed from from former Hull KL Junior. He did very well. Really, Goal kicking wasn't great though. None from two. Yeah, but they both were out wide. To be fair, so it's not not a huge surprise. They weren't easy kicks to to get. Or you wouldn't really expect. Uh, Doug Chernside uh, starting a hooker as well. Uh, did you know kept the ball moving very well? And Will Budd when he came off the bench. Uh, do well. and Chris oh, Cullimore but another former whole KR junior no he's uh, former London oh right ok <clears throat> but um, are you thinking of Jubb yes I am Will Jubb yes. yeah yeah um, is it York was it York I don't know is it York I don't know so, anyway so the um the the Bucks Park Arena has had a bit of an overhaul. Uh, while, it has a, had a facelift at the Broad yeah. Bought and other other butts. Yes, there's been a been a, a butt job or whatever it is you'd you'd call it. A butt lift. Um, butt lift. Yeah. So it's a, it's now a, a brand new shiny 4G pitch that's been uh, slight slight drainage issues. It does hold a bit of water, so uh, that'll need to be fixed at some point. However, the comedy point is. The RFL are insisting on this new rule where there must be a full three metre clearance between the dead ball line and the advertising yeah. audience. Therefore, you've got the dead ball line that's um, etched into the pitch properly and exactly 10 centimetres, not even the other side of that, there is then another line painted for that... Uh, so, to give that clearance space so it's good enough to play international rugby union on but the rfl insists that an ex extra line has to be painted in to have that three meter clearance <laughs> so what i'm looking forward to is old trafford when they uh had to get the the measuring stick out there i think it's probably three meters it's just all three meters of downhill <laughs> <laughs> old trafford um so um not a great start for for the Bears on the field, but not too disappointing against one of the favourites to only get beaten by 20 points. I'm sure the Bear Necessities, now officially the Coventry Bears podcast, will give a much more complete view on all things new down the big foot. And I have to pay for Dennis Betts' parking. Yes! Why? Because um, the man doesn't carry change. Is the is the is the short of it, and they've changed the rules at uh, at the big butt. So now the car park is now managed by one of these machines, and you have to put money in the machine. It used to be free at the back car park, so players and staff could park for free. 
but now it's a it's a proper metered car parking thing and he didn't have any change on him and apparently previously been stung uh, and ended up issued with some sort of fine for parking so he, he was quite nervous about it and so he came in the door and asked for if anyone had any change and so I ended up uh, giving some money for the Dennis Betts parking fund in exchange for some cookies I assume well exactly yeah uh, elsewhere, it was Doncaster 22, Barrow 32, London Scholars 16, North Wales 40. A good performance from the Crusaders there. Workington 24, Keefley 6. Big win to start things off for Workington. And West Wales 10, Hunslet 50. In the stand West, Wales, I mean, West Wales had had been leading this as well. Wow, there and, you go. And then, yeah, and then fell apart like a fly in the cupboard. Obviously, early days in the standings. Um, Hunslet, North Wales, Newcastle, Workington, and Barrow were the top five because they won. Rochdale sit in the middle because they're on zero points difference because they didn't play. <laughs> Doncaster, Keefley, Coventry, Scholars, and West Wales make up the rest of the table in that order. Uh, we had another fan viewing on one of the other games that was streamed over the weekend, and um, I do have a result for. I do have a score line for this once you've read through the fan review, Tim. Yeah, it comes from Carsten who says that Cougars. Uh, sorry, it's the RAF ladies against the Keefley Cougars, and Cougars were way too good for RAF ladies in very windy conditions. The Air Force came back into the game after a fast start by the Cougars, but Keefley took the win in a very solid second half. Yeah, it finished yeah, not the only... 12 in the uh, Women's Challenge Cup game there. It, it took until today for the uh, um, result to be put on the RFL website, unfortunately. Not, not the only... Um, Armed Forces side playing because the Army played yesterday. I believe they beat Halifax. And I I, I totally can't keep track of where this Women's Challenge Cup is up to at this stage. It seems like games are being played very spread apart in these early rounds. Um, So we'll try and bring you as much as we can on those games. And thanks, Carson, for getting the fan review in to make sure we discussed that one. Now we're going to move on to our round six guesses. Predictions time, Timothy. It's round six of the Super League that we'll do first. Um, Thursday, 7.45pm on Sky, of course. It's Leeds versus Toronto. Return of the Mac. Do you think that he can inspire his Toronto team to raise hell against Leeds? No. Hopefully you have a less uh, checkered uh, history than Mark Morrison, but I doubt it somehow, given the fact that they'll be lucky if they've got a, a 21-man squad. I can't see. I know Leeds are actually playing well. They're gelling. They've got combinations working. They are a side that have changed a lot since he was there, so it's not like he'll be able to have too much insider knowledge to have the wood over them. I can't see anything but a Leeds win fairly comfortably, to be honest. Yeah, sorry Toronto fans, I'm I'm of the same opinion. I'm sure that first win will come soon as you get back over um, over the pond and get some home games in. But for this one, I'm going Leeds by 20. Okay, Friday night, 7:45 p.m. kickoff. St Helens host Huddersfield. These are two of the players in the chasing pack at the moment. Um, after seeing. Huddersfield be ultimately outclassed in the end by Wigan it maybe was a, a good point of reflection for Huddersfield being a good side this year certainly better than the sort of relegation fight tips that, that many of us might have expected after what we saw from them last year however I don't think they're quite good enough against the top top sides and St Helens certainly are one of them I'm going to go Saints by 12 yeah I think similar sort of margin but definitely definitely for Saints on that one um, also Friday night 7.45pm Wakefield host Hull FC where do you see the spoils going in this one Tim I've gone for home field advantage but I'm not confident it's a flip a coin kind of job I Hull FC slipped up because they're struggling to be an 80 minute team they're attack isn't exactly coherent but when it works it looks good I don't know if Wakefield quite have the skill to also be an 80 minute team uh, the skill and the ability and so I'm going to give credit to the B 
big men of Hull and say Hull FC by 16.